everybody, I'm here with my good friend Gareth Lennart from Tourist Tutani. What's up guys, we are here in Iceland for the next 12 days. We're gonna take you around the country and show you the best this place has to offer. But before we hit the ring road, let me tell you something about the logistics. This is the ring road and this is our version of it. So we have little side trips here and there. And this will all together take us about 10 days. Gerv and I planned to explore the ring road first. For this, we picked accommodations in strategic locations all along the ring road to make the most of our time. After completing the ring road, we want to explore the capital Reykjavik, to experience the Icelandic culture and to discover some spots along the Golden Circle as well as the highlands of Iceland. After buying all supplies needed for this road trip and fueling up our mighty duster in Reykjavik, we hit the road. Welcome to Circling Iceland. Iceland is a volcanically and geologically active Nordic island country of Europe located in the North Atlantic Ocean. It sits spanning the mid-Atlantic ridge tectonic plate boundary, which separates the Eurasian and the North American plates. Geologically speaking, Iceland is the youngest country in the world, since it only began to rise from the North Atlantic seabed about 25 million years ago, the product of volcanic eruptions that are still going on today. The center of the country consists of a plateau, characterized by sand and lava fields, mountains and glaciers, while many glacial rivers flow to the sea, creating numerous waterfalls. We finally made it to our first stop, the Rauna Fosse. It only took us three hours <laughs> because we stopped everywhere. I guess that's the problem everyone has coming to Iceland. It's just so beautiful and overwhelming that you think you need to stop everywhere. It comes right out of the land. It's right from the glacier. It comes right out of the yeah, from the glacier. It's just over there. There is the glacier. Raunafossa is a series of waterfalls formed by rivulets streaming over a distance of about 900 meters out of a lava field which flowed from an eruption of one of the volcanoes lying under the glacier Langjökull. The name comes from the Icelandic word for lava, Baun, and the word for waterfalls, Fossa. A word you'll hear many times in this series from now on. Day has been much longer than we thought it would be, but Iceland is just too stunning. So we made it to our first accommodation. It's one of these pots over there. So this is where we slept tonight. Our home away location in Anastapi. Anastavi is located on the south side of the Snefelsnes Peninsula and it's worth visiting because of this beautiful, dramatic coastline here. When heading to Anastapi, make sure to bring some time to walk the trail along the impressive coastline with columnar basalt and cliffs that were once formed by the lava, hence the hexagonal shapes. On the way to the cliffs, you pass by an enormous troll-like monument, which is a tribute to Baradur, the region's guardian spirit and the leading character in a local saga. We're going up there to the north side of the Snefelsnes Peninsula. We made it to Kirkjufellfoss, a waterfall which is famous for this mountain here. Because if you photograph it from the right side, you have a beautiful picture. One of the most popular pictures here in Iceland. Beside the waterfall being one of the most popular photo locations on the island, the mountain behind it, the Kirkjufattl, was one of the filming locations for Game of Thrones season 6 and 7, featuring as the Arrowhead Mountain. We promised ourselves yesterday we wouldn't drive in the dark anymore. But here we are, 6 p.m., we have three hours to go. Steve's behind the wheel. We are just driving straight through the fog. He says the White Walkers are waiting for us. I hope that's not the case. And there's a second one in. There's two wooden annexes. Oh, this first try? We might have some. Oh, and there's our house. To explore the north of Iceland, we decided to base ourselves a little bit north of Akureyri in a house by the fjord in Nuttler. 
Located at the Eyjafjörður, this beautifully designed house was the perfect fit for us to explore this area of the country and even more important for us due to its incredible location with a good chance to see the northern lights. But you know, the best part about this house is having a hot tub. It's really so nice and the fjord is right behind us. It's incredible. I'll drink to that. It's time for a little hike. We're in the Ausberg Canyon. I'm gonna go check out this canyon from above. There's a viewpoint right at the end. It's a two and a half hours round trip. Let's go. Ausbirgi was most likely formed by catastrophic glacial flooding of a river after the last ice age, first 8 to 10,000 years ago and then again some 3,000 years ago. The river has since changed its course and now runs about 2 kilometers to the east. After a good hour of hiking we finally made it to the viewpoint over the Ausbirgi canyon. Look at this, how beautiful. Still have some fall foliage left. Great spot. The legend explains the unusual shape of the canyon differently. Nicknamed Sleipnir's footprint, it is said that the canyon was formed when Odin's eight-legged horse touched one of its feet to the ground here. Good morning, it's day number, officially day number three. I'm just ready for a big breakfast and then a bigger day out on the roads. To day three, road trip. And our next stop here in the north is the Kodafoss waterfall. Godafoss is Icelandic for waterfall of the gods. In the year 1000, the law speaker Forgir Losveningagodi made Christianity the official religion of Iceland. According to a modern myth, it is said that upon returning from Althinki, Forgir threw his statues of the Norse gods into the waterfall. Little did we know that the highlight of this day was still to come. Just about to go to bed, it's one o'clock and then I saw the northern lights are happening. So we just came out of our house because we have northern lights right in front of our house. See that? You can actually see that here filming. Even so we checked the forecast since our arrival, we were still surprised and totally overwhelmed when we saw the show Nature put on for us that very night. This is unreal. Oh my god. Oh my god. I've never seen something like Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're sadly leaving our home away by the fjord and we're heading to the east of Iceland today. But first we're gonna check out some waterfalls and some volcanic activity. This is gonna be awesome. You have arrived. Yeah! We're now in Mewatten, which is an area of high geothermal activity. So you have mud pits here, you have hot springs and you also have a cave which is very famous for Game of Thrones. 
The Mivatn district lies on the western border of the volcanic zone, which cuts across northeastern Iceland from north to south and is an extension of the Mid Atlantic Ridge. All geological formations are quite recent, dating from the Ice Age and post glacial times. Mivatn itself is a shallow eutrophic lake which was created by a large basaltic lava eruption 2300 years ago. The name of the lake, Icelandic for the Lake of the Midges, comes from the huge number of midges to be found there in the summer. Alright guys, next spot on the list is a cave which is famous from Game of Thrones. This is the place where Jon Snow and Igrid got cozy. So, we got a little bit late to the Detty Foss, so <laughs> we're now walking with our torchlights and we want to do some long exposure photography. We don't need ND filters today. <laughs> we are in the Vatna Jökuls Shotkuvadu National Park. What? <laughs> Detty Foss is reputed to be the most powerful waterfall in Europe. The superlative of most powerful comes from its water flow times its fall distance. The water comes from the nearby Vatnajökull glacier and falls for more than 44 meters, causing a massive crashing spray. After that, it was another long drive through the night until we arrived at our next cabin in the southeast of Iceland. We made it! For our time in the east, we stay in a little cottage here in Brakta Velia. Let's have a look inside. Our plan for the day was to hike into Sadisfjörde, so we drove two hours north. But this time, the weather wasn't on our side. Ah. What do you think? Shall we hike? It's gonna happening. <laughs> no. Let's get a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hikes off. We're gonna go try to find a hot dog instead. <laughs> we came to a gas station to have a hot dog. Yeah. That's the way to do it in Iceland. Cheers. After our first failed attempt of hiking today, the sun now came out and we drove to another spot, the Hengi Fosser hike. Uh, the Hengi Fosser is the third highest waterfall in Iceland. It takes about 40 to 60 minutes to walk to the waterfall, which has a height of 128 meters. Hengi Foss is surrounded by basaltic strata with thin red layers of clay between the basaltic layers. My name is Gareth Leonard and this is extreme waterfall posing. <laughs> Yay! Further down the Hengifossa River is Lidlanesfoss, notable for the columnar jointed volcanics around it. Beside its fjords and waterfalls, the east and especially the southeast of Iceland offers some of the most picturesque coastal drives, in an area which is less touristy than others due to its distance to the capital. Update on the gas situation. The eye can start to blink. This crust the tunnel. <laughs> oh god. The gas station is still nine kilometers away. We made it through the tunnel though, that's the most important thing. If we would have got stuck in that tunnel, that would have been bad. So guys, always get gas at a gas station you see even when you're only half filled up. Well, we are one minute away, 1.6 kilometers away, and this baby is starting to pump a little. He wants to shut down, but he's staying strong for us. The mighty duster is coming through. The, the pin is right on our map. Uh, we have it in sight. Whoa. 80 meters away. Zero meters away. 
Looks like we made it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we made it! Man, that was close call for a second. Hefn, a beautiful little fishing town in the southeast located on a peninsula. Beautiful spot to check out. Hey, be free, be free, be free with me. We're in East Iceland right now, heading south. It's a beautiful day. We got a lot to do. Let's go. The Vatnajökull is the largest glacier in Iceland. And this glacier we're going here is one of the best spots to come for sunrise or sunset. It's just incredible. It's cold out here, but it's beautiful. To see the glacier up close, we partnered up with the local family-run glacier guiding company called Local Guide, who invited us to one of their ice cave tours at the glacier Skafta Fettelsjökull. All right, so we made it to the spot. We're right next to the Vatnajökull glacier with our little tour group over here. We're just getting prepared and then we're heading off to the ice cave. Skafta Fettelsjökull is a spur of the Vatnajökull ice cap. With an area of 8,100 square kilometers, Vatnajökull is the largest ice cap in Europe by volume and the second largest in area. It is located in the southeast of the island, covering more than 8% of the country. We're about to head down into this ice cave. We have a crazy, crazy big glacier right in front of us. We're gonna head down here, do a little ab sailing, check it out, the belly of the beast, come on. We drove past a little bit the very famous Glacier Lagoon and then we found this little guy here. Pretty cool spot and less people. After the glacier, it's now finally time to see another waterfall. <laughs> so we're here to hike to the Svartifoss waterfall. It's like Svartifoss. a two kilometer hike, 45 minutes, 90 minutes loop. We can maybe do that in 60. If we hurry. The Svartifoss is surrounded by dark lava columns, which gave rise to its name, the Black Falls. We're trying to find our next home away. And we have instructions here. It's like follow, follow this road and then search for an exit road, then search for a blue sign. It's, yeah, it's kind of a mission in the dark. It's all gravel roads. I think we made it. All right, that's it. We have a movie night here. Whoa! Nice. It is early in the morning and we just had a little drive from our cottage to go to one of the very picturesque hot springs in that area. It's up that valley, little hike. Let's do that. So we made it to the hot springs. It's called Selja Wallalauk and Gareth is about to jump in. <laughs> that is refreshing! <laughs> The canyon we are hiking up now is about 2 million years old and it's called the Fjadral Gjufur Canyon and got very popular because Justin Bieber shot his music video I'll show you right here. So it's now on me to show you. 
The canyon with the Fiatra river flowing through it is up to 100 meters deep. It was created by progressive erosion by flowing water from glaciers, through the rocks and pelagonite over millennia. If you want to walk all the way up, it's about two kilometers. And what a picturesque canyon that is. way back to Vic we spotted that waterfall right here which is not famous at all <laughs> so we thought we'd just stop by and take some little pictures over here another nighttime adventure we just hiked about four kilometers to the very famous plain wreck which can be found on a black sandy beach close to Vic the story behind it is that in 1973 an American military plane had severe icing and was forced to land here. But luckily enough nobody was killed. Today the plane wreck is still here and it's a very popular location for photographers. Good morning from our home away. We're having breakfast, Gareth is preparing. What are you preparing? Good morning. This is an old family recipe. My mother used to call it birds in a nest. You take a nice regular piece of bread, like this, and then you take out the middle, like this, and we fill it with egg. We have a nice little breakfast treat. Let's see. Just like mom used to make. Celia Lands Foss is our next stop and it looks like the word is out about Iceland. Celia Lands Foss drops 60 meters and is part of the Celia Lands River that has its origin in the volcano glacier Eyjafjallajökull. Jökull. The special thing about this waterfall is that visitors can walk behind the falls into a small cave. We are now at Rainis Fjara which is a black beach where you can see some pretty cool rock formations out in the ocean. It's right next to Vik. The basalt sea stacks are named Rainis Dranga. Legend says that the stacks originated when two trolls dragged a three-masted ship to land unsuccessfully. And when daylight broke, they became needles of rock. Maybe you're more lucky with the weather than us. <laughs> when you have a rainy day is of course visit another waterfall. <laughs> this is the Skogafoss, a very picturesque waterfall because you can just stand in front of it like Gareth is doing here over there. Makes up for a good picture. This is it from the ring road. We are now heading to Reykjavik to do the Golden Circle to do more adventures in and around Reykjavik. Reykjavik is a popular stopover destination. This is why in this video I'm gonna show you what you can do in 48 hours in and around the capital of Iceland. Let's go! Reykjavik is not only the capital and largest city of Iceland, it is also the world's northernmost capital of a sovereign state. The city was founded in 1786 as an official trading town and grew steadily over the next decades, as it transformed into a regional and later national center of commerce, population and governmental activities. It is among the cleanest, greenest and safest cities in the world. Start things off at the landmark of Reykjavik, the Hattelgrimskirkja, which is among the tallest structures in the capital city and the best place to see the city from above. Let's check it out. At 74.5 meters high, Hattelgrimskirkja is the country's largest church and among the tallest structures in Iceland. The church is named after the Icelandic poet and clergyman Hattelgrimmo Pettersson, author of the Passion Hymns. Between 
between the city exploration of Reykjavik, we stopped by a little seafood restaurant to try the famous fermented shark. So make sure to head over to Gareth's channel to check out what the experience is like. Don't do it. People had it rough here in Iceland for a long time. My next stop is the harbor of Reykjavik, where traditional fishing industry meets modern developments with cute little cafes, restaurants and modern architecture, like the Harper building right behind me. Harper is a concert hall and conference center in Reykjavik, which was opened in 2011. It houses the Iceland Symphony Orchestra and the offices of the Icelandic Opera. The building features a distinctive colored glass facade, inspired by the basalt landscape of Iceland. Reykjavik is dotted with street art, another good reason to go for a stroll in the city center. beyond fish soup and hot dogs, the Flemmo Food Hall is the right place to go. So let's head in and check it out. Flemme Food Hall is inspired by the great European food halls. Here, 10 ambitious vendors provide, as they say, all kinds of food for all kinds of people. Another must when you are in Reykjavik is the Blue Lagoon, which is located just 40 minutes out of the city. Um, a good time to visit is actually at night because it's very relaxing and there are not as many people. The Blue Lagoon Geothermal Spa is one of the most visited attractions in Iceland. The lagoon is a man-made lagoon, which is fed by the water output of the nearby geothermal power plant Svartsengi and is renewed every two days. The warm waters are rich in minerals like silica and sulfur and bathing in the Blue Lagoon is reputed to even help some people suffering from skin diseases. The water temperature in the bathing and swimming area of the lagoon averages between 37 and 39 degrees Celsius. Like in every other city, you should also check out the nightlife in Reykjavik. And I just happened to be here during the Iceland Airwaves music festival. So, let's check that out. The thing about this festival is that the venues are scattered around the whole city. So this way you get to know a lot of bars and little pubs and it really has a connection to the city. And if you don't have a ticket for the festival, you can also enjoy it because there are numerous of venues where you can enjoy live music totally for free. When you do nightlife in Reykjavik, you need to do it right. So you need to finish it with some hot dogs, right? start and heading to the Golden Circle. The Golden Circle is a popular tourist route covering about 300 kilometers looping from Reykjavik into the southern uplands of Iceland and back. It is the area that contains most tours and travel related activities in Iceland. And the first step is the geyser. Starting small here with literally geyser. The interesting thing about this geothermal area is that this is the original geyser. This is where the name geyser comes from. The most impressive one you can tell by the people is the Strokur, which shoots water into the air every six minutes. So everyone there is waiting for it to burst. Gotelfoss means Golden Falls. Here the wide Ölvesa River rushes southward and about a kilometer above the falls it turns sharply to the right and flows down into a wide curved three-step staircase and then abruptly plunges in two stages, 11 meters and 21 meters, into a crevice 32 meters deep. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. The circle can be overwhelming, so make sure to start early 
and to start at the furthest point of it, for example at the Gophos. This way you skip all the masses coming in with the buses because they do one attraction after the other. Another tip is to go a little bit of the Golden Circle by renting a 4x4 and then you can make your way into the Highlands where the true gems are waiting for you. So we simply drove to the Highlands that are called Raunia and there's a canyon just a 15 minute walk uh, behind it and we just came here and we have this place all to ourselves. It's just incredible. is located right at the end of the Golden Circle and it's filled up with water. A really colorful spot for some photographs. Gerrit is one of several crater lakes in the area, known as Iceland's Western Volcanic Zone, created as the land moved over a localized hotspot. But it is the one that has the most visually recognizable caldera still intact. The rainbow is leading the way. We're heading up this valley because up there there are geothermal hot springs and there's a river where you can jump in and relax. Reykjadalur means steam valley as it is filled with hot springs and mud pools. It is located about 45 kilometers out of Reykjavik, close to the town Kveregeri. After a three kilometer hike up the valley, you get to a hot river in which one can bathe. We're in a river in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> Feels nice when you're in here. All right, guys, this is it from this Iceland road trip adventure with my buddy Gareth from Tourist to Town. You make sure to check out his channel too. Go to my website for all the guides to do it yourself, and make sure to just subscribe to this channel for new travel videos every Thursday. See ya! See ya! So that goes up around here? Exactly, on the black screen. Okay. Got everything, man? Let's get the beers. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there is this little side road here. We just ran into another couple. Well, not another couple, the only couple. We're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a delicious little... Hold on. Steve's driving. We're up for another adventure. This time we're... Oh god. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh god. Can you imagine? It's like, welcome to. Oh, just, just me this time. Shit. <laughs> Three and a half hours away from our next destination, which is where? In the north of Iceland. <laughs> What's it called? The Mid Atlantic Ridge. It's, it's written in there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't read. Um... Oh, fucking this thing. Day five? And today is Thursday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What, well, four or five? Good morning. Today is day five and I are... Four. Oh, shit. Have a little table where you can eat. I'll edit your photos from your amazing Iceland rainbow trip. This is just four. Okay. Okay, go ahead and just see. Move out. Move out. Here we go. Hmm? <laughs> I'm in Reykjavik, we're going to... Good morning! Uh, if I had the lens that worked... Hi, one last hot dog before we leave this country. Just 13 bucks! <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha